All right, I'm going to breeze through this because I only have 10 minutes to do this. So, first thing first, open up Godot, go into a 2D scene, open up a new 2D scene, uh, right click on this node, and go to change type. And we're going to change that to character body 2D. Um, double click on that and change it to player, the name. Then we're going to add a collision shape because it's giving us an error for that. And once you have the collision shape, make sure it's highlighted. Go into the right side or the other side and click on this little box that says shape and put new rectangle shape. And then you should have a box. Um, this is a collision shape just to make sure we don't go through walls later or floors. So then after that, go back to your little player node here and a, a, add a sprite. Make sure it's animated sprite. Um, it's going to give you an error again. Go over to the other side where it says animations. Click on that. And where it says uh, sprite frames, put new sprite frames. And then click into that, and you'll get yourself a brand new um, box here. We're going to change this to idle. Whoops. Make sure you can spell, unlike me. Idle uh, left, because this is where she's going to be. Um, this is where she's going to be um, pointing to, the left side. Um, I already added sprites to this, so um, I'll leave links in the description so you can get these yourself. Um, but yeah, so once you have your sprites, go over here where it's little boxes, and click on that. Go into your wherever you've, you saved your sprites. Open up Samus, and as you can see here, we have a whole bunch of little pictures. The one that I want to grab is this one. So I did this ahead of time. So it's about 50 rows of horizontal and 52 rows of vertical. Then we're going to have to offset this a little bit to make sure we get the box that we want. Make sure that looks good. Right there. And then click onto here and add. And there you go. You have her added. Now we're just going to go back to collision shape and make sure that this box encompasses her because, like I said, this is to make sure she doesn't fall to walls and stuff. Um, we're going to save it. And we're going to save it as player. So that's Control S. And then up there, we're going to go to Project project settings and as you can see here she's very very blurry so we're gonna fix that so you're gonna go into your project settings and then we're gonna go to I believe render I'm just typing it in so it goes in go to texture and where it says default texture filter change that to nearest and you'll get the nice little sprite look that you have um, since we're here already we're gonna also change the window size um, I'm gonna go for like the NES which I believe was 256 by 240 I believe that was its resolution. And then for your aspect mode, go to viewport and leave it at keep. And all that's going to do is um, once we open up our render box, um, whoops, yeah, click on this, make sure she's completely selected. Um, make sure she's in this blue box. That's where um, the thing is going to render. And then if you click on this little box here, you will see that she's uh, inside the middle and it stays at its, at its aspect ratio is is kept. So that's all we're doing. That. So next, that we have that, we're gonna make her move. So go into the script here, right click, and it should say attach script. Um, if this thing has a template on it, get rid of it. Make sure it's unchecked. We're gonna be doing our own thing. All right. So once you create that, we're gonna create a few variables here. Um, let me see here. The variables that we are going to create are variable movement. This is going to control her movement, vector 2. Then we're going to have her speed, which is how fast she's going to go. I want her to go by 100 pixels per, per frame. We need her jump height, which is how high she's going to jump. I think I did 600 last time, so we're going to do that. Oh, make sure you put the variable. Um, and then the next thing we're going to need to do is how fast she's going to fall. And that's going to be equal to zero. Oh, excuse me, equal to five. Um, and then we're going to be doing animations. So we're going to do at on ready variable animations is equal to Samus. Oh, I never named that. Name this to us Samus animations. Okay, there we go. Now we need a couple of methods. We're gonna do function ready. All this is gonna do is if we have any code that needs to execute when this thing is, is called, it'll do it immediately. And then we need a method that's gonna be checking our code um, every single frame, which is what this one's for. Okay, now I'm gonna add a few more. 
here because they're going to be doing a couple of other things. So we're going to do a control loop, or um, I think that's what I called it. Whoops. And then control loop. You know what? We're going to call this uh, player movement instead. It's going to control where exactly what you think. And then we're going to have uh, function animation player spell and this is going to control the uh, pl player's animation and, and if I have time which I doubt very seriously I will fire a uh, weapon I'm going to pass okay so here in the player we're going to create a couple of variables left equals input dot is action pressed and we're going to use UI left that's just the left keys on your left arrow keys on your uh, keyboard here then we're going to control C and then control, whoops we're going to copy this a couple of times and then we're going to change this so we're going to have a right and this is going to be right and we're going to have a jump and that's going to control exactly what you think so self-explanatory um, this one here, we don't want it to be just, yeah, we want that one to be just pressed. Um, these, we we want it to be pressed. That way it's going to check it every single frame. Just pressed is going to check it only one time, and that's it. And this is going to be the accept right here. That's the space bar. So now that's done, we are going to add a couple of things here so we can move. So our movements are going to be booleans, and they're going to be manipulated. Dot x equals um crap what is it oh int left plus int right and then movement dot y equals int oh wait this doesn't need to be negative int jump and there we go okay don't worry i'm going to explain this in just a second so all this is doing is because it's a boolean okay what is the issue here movement is not declared uh, i must spell it that's fine um, all this is is a boolean once these are pressed um it's going to kick back a number um either zero which is false or one which is true um depending on um if it's true or not so we're going to use that number to manipulate our movement. So, what we need to do now is go to the physics player. We're going to go player movement. Now, I said player movement. And then we're going to add a built in function called move and slide. And all it's going to do is allow us to move. Um, it's a built-in function for the character 2D, uh, character body 2D, so don't think too much about it. And then, for whatever reason, if I remember correctly, I have to store this in here, and that should be movement dot normalized times speed times delta. delta. Okay. And all this is going to do is that the movement.normalize is going to make sure that we're not moving faster when we're going into the diagonal area. So the speed is being timed by delta, meaning if there's ever any discrepancies between your frames. So let's say you're, you know, you're going from 30 to 60 frames or maybe 45 to 60 or even 60 or higher. It just makes sure that the, um, that the character movement is, is, there we go, it's coherent. So now with all that done, if we press this button here, we should be able to move. We're not being, we're not able to move. I must have forgotten something. Hold on one second. What did I miss? Oh, I see, I see. I need to, um, I need to make sure that the character's velocity is being affected here. So not equal to zero. All right, looks like I'm just about out of time here, so I'm gonna go a little bit longer and yeah. So anyway, so if movement is not equal to zero, meaning that I am moving, and I need to spell this correctly, 
we're going to we are going to affect velocity, which is built in to the character body 2D x, and then we want this to be equal to the movement dot x times speed. Remember what I said before that. Um, these things are going to kick back a one or a, uh, a one or a zero. So all that's going to say is when I press this, um, take the either the one or the zero and times that by speed. And since we have um, a negative here, if it's ever negative, it's all going to be a negative one times the speed. And then I need to do one last thing, and that is else velocity dot x equals zero, meaning if um, if we're not moving, then our velocity is also zero. So now, with all that said and done, we should be able to move. And there you go. All right, so let's add gravity. I don't want the gravity to be in here. I want it to be in its own separate script. So we're going to do, go over here, right click, new script, call it gravity. And the reason why I don't want it within inside the player script is because I want other entities to be able to use this. So gravity and then we're going to drop that into our scripts folder keeping our stuff organized first thing I need to do is give this a class name so I can call it from other scripts so class name we're going to call this gravity force and then after that we're going to need two variables so first variable is a terminal velocity which is how fast we want us to cap out at I'm going to pick 360 and then we need the gravity gravity strength and that's going to be equal to 60 50, excuse me, 50. All right, now after that we're going to use a new method we're going to call function uh, current gravity and then we need to make a copy of this script here that way only the that way, if anything ever happens to the gravity because of the player, it doesn't affect any of the other enti entities that are using it. So gravity, that's going to be variable, um, new gravity, and then we're going to use that to get gravity force dot new. So now we've made a copy of this, and then what we need to do next is we need to get the velocity dot y, and we need that to be equal to, I believe, the fall. Yes, it needs to be equal to fall velocity. So, okay. Now to that, we need to make sure that this affects us. So, there is a built-in method called is on floor, and that is built in to the character body 2D. And all this is going to do is check is that we are currently on the floor. Anytime we're on the floor, it does something. And in this particular case, though. It's uh, this little exclamation mark means not. So it says if we're not on the floor, meaning we're currently in the air, we need to do this needs to be changed to new new gravity. So fall velocity is plus equal to new gravity dot gravity. So it's just adding 50 each frame. And then after that, if we ever touch the ground, we want that to be reset. Is on floor. Jesus Christ. Okay, let's do this again. Now with 100% less screwing up, and then fall velocity, we want this to be equal to 5. Yes, okay. So now that's going to be reset every time we land on the ground. And then we also need to make sure that we cap our fall out. So if we fall, we don't want to keep, we don't want the number to increase. Here, I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about here. Print, what is this? Uh, fall velocity and then I need to apply it over here or call it so we're gonna call this what's this gravity current gravity current gravity so what's gonna happen is what's this gravity did I misspell it it looks like I did that's all right oh that's right it's not gravity it's um gravity strength my mistake here all right and now I'm gonna put this in you can see here, this number is going crazy. So all we want to do is cap it out. So we're going to do if fall velocity is greater than or equal to 
new gravity dot max oh no terminal terminal velocity we want the fall velocity to be equal to that so all this is saying is that if the fall velocity is ever greater than or equal to the ma the terminal velocity then just make it equal and as you'll see right here it stops at 360 so that ends that all right so next the next part of the tutorial um, I'll show you how to make a tile map that way you can um, that way she's not falling into the nothingness all right goodbye for now but not for long